Okay, EGR troubleshooting on a 96 Camry 2.2. Uh, um, anyways, I was getting PO401 and couldn't figure out why. I did a few things and then finally I invested in one of these guys. And you'll need one too. It's a brake bleeder vacuum pump kit. You can get it at Harbor Freight. Oh, uh, is it 63391? It looked like that. Anyways, you'll need that, and then you also want to get um, you want to get some of these adapters. This is a pretty cool adapter. It allows you to adapt different size hoses. Um, it's a Dorman four seven three zero nine, and then they have the same thing as a T, um, and it's a four seven three four nine. So if you want a T in, then you'll want that, and then you'll need a little piece of vacuum hose. So, in no particular order, here's some things you can check right away while the engine's cold. Um, first, check your EGR valve and see if um, it's leaking, the diaphragm's leaking. So then try to pull a vacuum on it so you see it's holding steady, right? So I don't have a leak on this. No leak at all, right? And then there's a little vacuum release right here. You can release it. And then you can hear it go up and down too. I don't know if you can hear that. You listen real quietly. Tick, little tick, hear that? Okay, so check your EGR valve that way. And then you can check these. See if you get any, if you can pull a vacuum on these, you shouldn't, right? If you do, that means you're plugged and you need to unplug them. So there's that one. And then, um, and this one here. We'll check them both. See, no vacuum, okay. Uh, one other thing you can do, too, is check your um, your uh, valve over here. here let me get this. Your, uh, this is what ended up being wrong on mine. It's a vacuum modulator. So you want to hook to the bottom uh, port right there and see if you can pull a vacuum on that. So, yep, I can, right? And it's holding a vacuum. So now mine wouldn't, I couldn't pull a vacuum on mine at all, my bad one. Um, so that would be a, that could be an indication of a problem, and also um, let's see if I didn't try this yet, but this idea came to mind. So now hook into the hose running over the EGR valve, and then see if you can pull a vacuum on that. Nope. Okay. So maybe that doesn't mean anything. I thought maybe that would test to see if the uh, spindle there was uh, okay or not. If you can get a vacuum there, so. Okay, because I replaced it um, like three days ago, and I haven't had a um, PO401 come up again. So, and it was coming up like every day, so that was definitely an issue. Uh, let's see, is there anything else you can test while cold? Oh yeah, so one other thing you can test while cold is you can hook to this hose, your Q hose here, and see if you can pull a vacuum as well. So that's... So it's got a slow something going on there. Huh? I wonder if that means I have a leak. I could hear the EGR valve open up though. Huh. All right, let's, what if we hook over here? We'll hook right to this guy. Maybe that just means I have a bad hose or something. Oh, same thing, huh? Well, I do have another VSV. Like, I'm not getting any air codes right now, though, so maybe I'm okay. All right, so I think that's it for cold testing. Let me turn it on and um, show you some other things you can check. Sorry, I'm wearing a cell phone. I'm wearing my cell phone on my head. So it looks like my VSV here, I hooked in the new one. And uh, I can, it will hold a vacuum like this. So it looks like my old VSV has uh, got a vacuum leak as well. So, um, yeah, all right, let me pause again. Okay, sorry for the craziness. Okay, it's back on. So the car is still cold, I just started it up. I have, I disconnected this hose running to the valve and I hooked up to the cube. And now when you hit it, see you should see a vacuum. See how it's holding a vacuum? Oh, sorry, maybe you're not seeing that. So, 
<laughs> you know, my old Viet, my old uh, modulator was not doing that at all. So I definitely had a bad mod uh, vacuum modulator. So let's pull this hose off. <laughs> Easier said than done. Come on. There you go. Okay, so let's see what kind of vacuum we're getting off right here. So let's try the key line first. So nothing, a little bit of vacuum to... Now this one was plugged on me. I had to use an air compressor to unplug it. So we got a little bit there. Let's try this one. Uh-oh. Oh, there it is. Maybe at a higher RPM. Okay. So those are two checks you can do there. Probably next what we'd want to tee in to see what's going on. So, all right. Well, probably the engine needs to be warm though. All right, let's try that. Okay. Oops, sorry again. Okay, you know what? I don't recommend this one, this T after all, because it won't fit these hoses. It doesn't have that same, goes too small on the end there, so it can't fit these. So I don't recommend you get this one. I don't think I have any other adapters, so I'm just going to stop this now. Maybe hopefully that was enough information to help you out. And um, all right, take care. Okay, I forgot there was probably a few more things I could show you. I got a little thrown off when my T didn't fit. Obviously, I didn't use it because I once I found my modulator bad. So one thing you can do too is test to see if your EGR even works. So you just hook up right to your EGR valve. When you pull a vacuum, you should kill the engine. Um, if it doesn't die, that means that... Here, let me turn the car off. If it doesn't die, that means that your EGR is probably clogged. So where it mounts onto the engine there, there's a hole in there. And if you look at other videos, you'll see it too. And it can get clogged up with carbon. So now I did take mine off and I cleaned it. It wasn't, it wasn't too bad. It was just a little bit in there. Um, you'll need to get that bad boy off. You'll need a, what's called a crow's foot, 24 millimeter. And you hook it up like this and then you can get onto that nut here. Now this is just for the 96, I think the 92 to 96, 97, um, they have the EGR a little different. Um, also, if you want, take it completely off. Um, you'll see the nut for the, uh, hopefully you can see it right down here. So that's for the metal tube that runs to the bottom there. So um, I also clean my throttle body at the same time. So when you take the throttle body off, all this is out of the way. It's really easy to get to that nut there if you want to take it off there. But when you finally put it all back together, you're going to need one of those crow's foot. So, um, so which means you'll need a throttle body gasket and a EGR valve gasket. Um, let's see, was there anything when I was cleaning it? Not that I can think of. So I just used carb cleaner for that. I didn't use throttle body cleaner. And just let it soak a little bit. And then, okay, is there anything else? Oh, and then with the throttle body, I didn't take it off either. I left it on. You have to take the air hose off, obviously. Um, but you can leave it all hooked up and clean it. It's not too bad. Um, and you remember, you'll probably need... I tried spraying throttle body cleaner into... Um, those holes, I use this um, Chemtool B12, but um, that didn't that didn't get it. It was when I used the air compressors when I discovered that this guy was plugged. So um, while you're using the air compressor, you work the throttle, and you can hear it. Um, you can hear you know air being able to pass through there. So anything else? Okay, now I think that really is it. And now I need to go find a better T because. Um, I want a tea <laughs> to be able to troubleshoot that later. Goodbye. Okay, okay one last update. Um, remember I showed you earlier, you can test your system. Right now the, the car's off. It's keys off. Um, you can hook up to your VSV there. And if you pull a vacuum on your vacuum thing, you can hear the EGR valve open. And then when you press the button, you hear it close. You hear it open and close. It's being real quiet here. Anyways. I don't know if you heard that. Okay, but now if you come in here and you turn the key on. Now when you do the same thing, you need your valve open. 
so you can pull a vacuum, but no, so you, you don't hear it opening and closing. So that's a way to find out if your VSV is working okay, if the solenoid is okay. All right, that's it. I hope that helped.